Good morning, church family. Pastor Ross here. And to visitors, welcome to our devotional channel here at Rockhampton Baptist. Death naturally produces for us a depth of sadness, which is often determined by uh, the closeness of the relationship that we have with someone or the connection that we've developed with that person. So how do you rationalise a seemingly callous commentary on God's approach, approach to our death as Christians? Well, in Psalms 116 and verse 15, the writer says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Let's ponder that for a moment. You know, it's natural to experience grief when someone dies, when we suffer the loss of a loved one, and more so as, as time goes by. There's a, there's a grief process we go through. There's a sense of shock and, and numbness and, and anger and depression because this person is not around anymore in the way that, that they were. You see, from God's perspective, our time on earth is temporal. Life itself is eternal. Death is merely the doorway into the next phase for those who, who love God and, and have served him. And so the purpose of God's redemptive work is to establish and uh, renew a relationship and fellowship with us. And that comes by the way of the cross and Jesus' resurrection. Well, the reality of that relationship and our eternal fellowship comes in a few different ways. We may end up passing through the doorway from this life into the next by translation, and that's what we call the rapture. And that's a process that will happen in the future for those of us who honour Jesus and are still alive when he comes again. The prophet Elisha never saw death, the Bible tells us. He was translated directly into the presence of God. Or it comes by means of physical death, and as you realise, that's the most common. And so therefore, physical death of his saints means a lot to the Lord. It's not, not to consider as something to be taken lightly, but the whole sense of the word is, is precious, is wonderful, is excellent. And so it's through the doorway of physical death that the work of salvation can be completed. We enter into his very presence and we share in the inheritance that he longs to share with us. And so in 1 Thessalonians 4, Paul has spoken about the hope of the resurrection. Let me read it to you. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so you'll not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. First the believers who have died will rise from their graves, then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth, will be caught up in the clouds to meet him in the air, then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. He finishes off. See, so you see, our, our death, our physical death is precious to him because it's the main way that God receives us and blesses us for all eternity. And we meet our loved ones with him in glory. We can be confident in death if we share that hope of a living risen Lord and we have that relationship with him. Psalm 116 in the New Living Translation puts it this way, the Lord cares deeply when his loved ones die. That's in fairly plain sorts of language. Why don't we pray? Father, we're so thankful for the hope that uh, we find in you and in your son, Jesus. As Christians, those who honour you and those who serve you, we recognise that our future is safe in your hands. And so whether we die out of this life or whether we meet you through the process of the rapture, we're just so thankful that, uh, that we will meet you. For those who are watching this, Father, and don't know you as their own personal saviour, or don't have the confidence that we have, I pray you'll speak into their heart this morning, and, uh, and they will come to know 
the, the fulfilling security of a loving relationship with you as well. And we thank you that that's what you will do for us as you forgive us and cleanse us and look earnestly for us to become part of, of your life in your presence. And so we pray this in your name. Amen. Well, keep walking with God and talk to him. Let him talk back to you as you read the Bible yourself. And when he does speak, trust and obey. Keep looking for opportunities to bless others. And if you'd like to speak to someone about some of these issues that we've been raising in these devotions, then don't hesitate to leave a contact at the bottom or call the church office. And we'll see you soon.